So what I'm going to do right now, we're going to check and see if the uh, solenoid is working inside of the leak detection pump. So I'm going to back probe the white with the green wire. That's going to be your power source. And then the uh, black with the purple, that's going to be your ground. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an external power source to this and you should hear a click which would be the solenoid kicking on and off. Now, just because the solenoid is kicking on and off, that still doesn't necessarily mean that the uh, leak detection pump is functioning correctly. It just means that the solenoid is working. We're gonna put that power source to the leak detection pump. That's gonna be my ground. When I touch the red in the red, you should hear a click from the solenoid. Hear that? That tells you that the solenoid is working inside of the leak detection pump. You want to do that a couple of times because it could be working sometimes and sometimes it's not working. And I'm getting that same P0456 that's coming back even after I've changed this hose uh, coming from the leak detection pump going over to the charcoal canister. I've changed that out, put some um, seals on it and uh, it rolled for about 130 miles and then the same cold came back and that's a, a small leak in my EVAP system. So again, if you click on the power to that white and green to your 12 volt power source, you're gonna hear that solenoid click. So we know the solenoid is working, but that doesn't mean that the actual unit is working it has a constant of uh, 5.5 or somewhere in that nature, 5.9 uh, voltage going to the leak detection pump at all times. So the car is cycling even as it's sitting. So uh, at certain times of the day or certain times of the night, um, it's, it's generating pressure and then it'll tell it to whether to release some of the pressure off the tank or not. I'm gonna test the switch to on position. I'm gonna put about 15 inches of uh, vacuum on it and uh, that power source should drop significantly and it should hold for as long as that I'm holding that power source on there. Um, if it does not drop, then you know that there's an issue with the uh, leak detection pump. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit and tap into that orange wire in the center. If you're laying on the ground looking up at the leak detection pump, your black with the purple is gonna be your ground. Your orange directly in the center, again, you're laying on your back looking up, is gonna be your uh, signal to switch. And the white with the green stripe to the far left, again, looking up on your back, looking up at the truck, uh, that's gonna be your power source. So we already got the power source and the ground tap, so now we're gonna tap into the uh, switch, switch to on which is in the center. And you gotta be careful not to touch those other probes in there. So what we have to do now is uh, remove this hose, which goes to the filter, which goes to a vent valve. So we're gonna remove this and we're gonna cap that off. Cause what we're gonna do is put a vacuum on this and that vacuum is going to trigger the switch that should drop the voltage on this, which lets us know that the leak detection pump is working. Now, this one goes to the charcoal canister, and this is the one that we're going to put that vacuum on. So we're going to take that line loose first. And I've already um, changed the, uh, the hose from the uh, charcoal canister to the leak detection pump. So that's a brand new hose, put uh, clamps on both ends of it. That uh, code came back, P0456. Uh, For some crazy reason, Dodge decided to only put this thing on the 2003 1500s. So it's real hard to find a video that really gives you a detail of how this system works because it seems to be that the 2003 Dodge 1500 has its unique EVAP system. So again, I'm gonna take this uh, charcoal canister hook up off, and that's what I'm gonna hook my vacuum pump to. 
just take a screwdriver and kind of wedge each end because you don't want to damage the hose. Again, that's a brand new hose I just put on there. And again, that code keeps coming back around 110 to 130 miles. So I've done it three times. So I say, okay, time to try something else. So we got the hose from the charcoal canister hanging down. We don't need that right now, but what we're gonna do is put my vacuum pump on the end of this where the charcoal canister goes, that tube that's closest to the ground, that goes to your charcoal canister, and that's where you wanna put your vacuum at. So we're gonna put that on there and then secure it down to make sure we're not gonna get any air in the line while we're trying to test that vacuum to make sure that it's triggering that solenoid on the inside. And you need to secure it too. Uh, this one again goes to the, uh, if you look at this filter right here, it runs from the top side and we wanna cap that off because this is an open end and it goes to a vent valve. So you got your filter here that keeps trash from coming out, but it goes, runs all the way up uh, somewhere around where the transmission is. But we're gonna close this off because if this is left open, we can't get that vacuum on there. So we wanna shut that vacuum off. So I'm gonna just let that hose hang down as well. Then I'm gonna use this clamp to uh, seal that back off because I need a real good seal on it to test and see if this thing's working properly. And I'm gonna snug that down, not to where it's gonna crush the uh, plastic up on it, but to where I can get a nice seal on it. So you wanna just do it like finger tight, uh, both of them, just finger tight. So again, what I'm gonna do now is I'm already tapped into the orange wire, which is my um, switch to on position. And I'm gonna hook this up to my VU meter and I'm gonna put it on voltage. And I'm gonna put this to my red on my VU meter. And then I'm gonna go back to the ground on the leak detection pump with my black from my VU meter, which is on the uh, leak detection pump. That's the black with the purple. So we're not gonna use the power source on the uh, leak detection pump right now. This is not necessary for this particular test. And when that vacuum kicks in, it should knock the uh, voltage down on the VU meter you see the voltage on that. So once I uh, turn the power switch on in the vehicle, I don't want to crank it, but I want to turn it all the way to the on position. That voltage should jump up to about a nine. So we're looking pretty good. That jumped up to that 8.9, so that's pretty close. But we know that the electrical circuits are working correct because it's doing what it's supposed to do. Again, that was supposed to move up. Now what happened is, if you look here at my vacuum here, I'm gonna put about 15 inches of vacuum on the line. Now, I want you to pretty much look over at the VU meter because once I start applying the vacuum, that number should drop and I'm gonna start applying vacuum now. So I'm at 15 inches of vacuum and that did not drop. So I'm gonna try this several times. I'm gonna let the vacuum off. I'm gonna do it again because they said check it two or three times to make sure that you're not getting a false reading. If that switch was working correct and I put that vacuum on there, 15 inches of vacuum, that voltage should drop and it should stay there as long as that vacuum is applied. So again, I'm gonna apply the vacuum again. I got 15 inches of vacuum on there and still no drop. So at this point, I'm assuming if everything's done correct, that leak detection pump is bad. The voltage should drop. So we're gonna hook up the uh, new one and we're gonna run this same test. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get this uh, power connection off. There should be like a little red lock tab at the top. Again, looking up from the bottom, 
you're gonna just push it over towards the leak detection pump, that little red tab, just push it over towards the leak detection pump and that should unlock it. And then on the end, there's another little clamp. You just mash down on it. You have to feel because you can't really see it, but you have to feel on it and then just kind of pull and go up and down real slight and it pops right off. But there's that tab I was talking about. You get a better look at the wires right here. Your black with purple, that's gonna be your ground and that's on your far right. The orange, which is gonna be your center and that's your switch to start. And the white with the green wire, that's gonna be your main power source. If you reach up top and you can see it from the bottom on the uh, Ram 1500, which I'm working on right here, the 03 Ram 1500, there's like a little clip tab that you can put your hand on. It's right between the metal bracket that it sits on and the leak detection pump itself. But you kind of push it towards the leak detection pump and you slide it up. And it's that simple. Okay, so we got the new leak detection pump here. Uh, the part number on it is 310-500. We're gonna go ahead and put this back on the bracket. Again, that bracket is right here and it simply just slides down. Well, let me show you that clamp that I was talking about while we're here. And that's all you're doing. You're just taking your thumb on that, push it in, and then slide it up. That's how you get it off. To put it back on is pretty much the reverse. So we're gonna go back here and there's like a little groove here that slides down on this little bracket joint here. It's real simple. And you'll hear it click. That's it. That simple. Goes back in place like that. And take your uh, power connector. Again, that red's going to be off to the right, but when you get it on there, you're going to lock it back in by pushing it. And you hear it click as well. That's locked back in. Now, what we're going to do is that same test before we put all this back together again. We're going to run that same test. So we're going to take the caps off here of our new leak detection pump. So we're going to go to this, uh, this hose right here off the leak detection pump, which is, like I say, if you're laying on your back, looking up at it, it's going to be the one to the very top and to the right. And we need to close that off. So again, that's closed off. That goes to this hose, if it were hooked up. And that hose goes to the um, the filter. The filter goes to the vent valve. So we don't need that right now. And the bottom hose is where we're gonna put our vacuum again. Just snug it down, finger tight. Don't wanna over tighten it, just finger tight. All right, so we got our vacuum line on there. Now we got to back probe it again. So we got the ground here. And we're gonna do that same vacuum test. So we're gonna run the ground in. And then that middle wire, which is orange, that's gonna be our switch to power source. Let me take this off real quick, just so I don't connect those two while I'm tapping into it. So again, I'm a back tap into the orange, which is our switch to power. And I'm gonna put back this ground wire. And the ground wire again goes to the black and the purple. The switch to on goes to the orange. And I'm gonna run that to my VU meter. If you look at the VU meter now, you'll see that's reading that same 8.8 .8. and I'm going to put 15 inches of vacuum on there and as I start applying the vacuum you should see this voltage drop if this uh, pump is working correctly there we go drop to zero that ain't even five pounds now if I release it it should go back and it went back 8.9 we're going to do that again because that absolutely did the job. 
So we're gonna put the vacuum on. As soon as I start applying vacuum, watch the VU meter. Went to zero. And that's not even that's not even three pounds of vacuum. So I think we got the job done. I'm gonna do that again. Release the vacuum. The voltage went back up to 8.9. I'm going to apply the vacuum again and that voltage should drop zero. That's what it should be doing. As you will notice the old one didn't do that. The new one's doing it without very much vacuum at all. So I'm thinking that we got this job done. Again, this is the Ram 1500 2003. Um, we're going to put this back together and it's pretty much the same as what we did when we took it apart. Now, inherit on these trucks, this hose, this is the first thing that you want to look for on that P0456. I mean, so many people on every Dodge form, this was the easy fix. But for me, that wasn't so much the fix because actually the code came back. So again, the next step would be to, to replace this leak detection pump. Now that's what everybody tells you, but nobody tells you how to check it, how to know that you're replacing the correct part. So basically you'll just be chasing yourself around in circles, doing one part after another part. But I thought it'd be a good video to kind of explain to you what this pump does. So uh, thanks for watching. And again, leave me some comments. Let me know if you liked the video, didn't like the video. Again, I normally do Triumph videos, haven't done any in a while, but um, this is a little project that my son and I was working on, so he's behind the camera right now, and uh, just thanks for watching TR Rehab.